UK Prime Minister Theresa May has announced an industrial strategy to boost some of the country's world-leading sectors. With me to discuss what the government plans to do is Rob Armstrong, our chief leader writer. Rob, what are the main elements of what the government plans to do? Well, there's a lot of them, but the most emphasis was put on supporting those sectors at which the UK already leads. These are mostly tech sectors, uh, pharma, clean energy, uh, digital, and so forth. A lot about making sure that the regions of the UK, prosperity is spread more broadly, not just into London and the southeast. And finally, about the skills gap. Is there more uh, vagueness than detail? I mean, is that one of the problems with it? Uh, I think there is an excess of detail. There's detail on everything. So there should, you know, before this turns into a white paper, a green paper says, what do you think about all this? Here's a very long, long wish list. I'd like this, I'd like a pony. And then a uh, white paper is a more specific statement of policy. So it's about what gets winnowed out from here on. Carolyn Fairburn, the Director General of the CBI, who I just spoke to, said um, it's better to have an industrial strategy than not to have one. Do you agree? I do not. I think we ought to have a productivity pol uh, policy in the UK. Indeed, a lot of countries could use one, especially the UK, because it lags its European peers in productivity so badly, uh, both in absolute level and in growth of productivity. What's the difference between a productivity strategy and industrial strategy? Well. Just the word industry makes you think about certain things. In other words, manufacture, getting particular evidence. Where are the buildings we're going to build? Where is, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What are the companies doing? Whereas productivity policy might deal much more with intangibles and uh, won't be tempted to pick winners. I mean, one of the issues about picking winners mm. is that none of us, sadly, um, or we'd be extremely rich now, identified <laughs> Apple <laughs> as yes. the future largest and most successful company in the world. Mm. I mean, how effective have, um, in the past, have been policies to pick champions and, uh, and, and specific sectors as well? They have been terrible. And the reason industrial strategy became, in a sense, a bad word for a long time in this country is that in the 70s, industrial strategy meant propping up industries that were definitely going to die anyway and like you en industry. yeah you ended up yeah. with cars with square steering wheels and things funny things like that here in the UK uh, in industrial strategy has since made a comeback and the first thing any on page one of any modern industrial strategy it says we're not going to pick winners governments tend to go on after that point and pick winners for example you talk about regions uh, when you pick a region or an industry you're still making a decision about what is the best, the most productive way to spend your money. Whereas I think what I would prefer and what the FT would prefer is investment and policy that makes it easier for everybody to do business mm -hmm. and sort of gets out of the way. I mean, one example of that, which is the thing that businesses that which I speak to complain the most about, is not being able to find people with the right skills. Mm. Um, and specifically, it's STEM, science, technology, yes. engineering, and maths. I mean, the government made announcements about this today yes. and said it would be investing more. But um, s uh, someone I spoke to later pointed out to me that the problem is, is that even people who graduate in STEM then don't go into the jobs where they're most needed. Mm. I mean, do you think that an industrial strategy like the one that's been announced is actually going to be effective in addressing that skill shortage? I think you have to keep trying on this one. People love to talk about Germany as an example of a country with a successful industrial strategy, and I think they systematically uh, exaggerate the degree to which the German government has picked out particular manufacturing sectors and made them successful. But what Germany really is good at, for example, is uh, vocational training, something that we're a little more uh, snobby about in the United States and in the UK. And so you have to keep churning out, trying to churn out people with the right skills. We don't have the exact right formula, but that's definitely one of the areas that is a crucial part of productivity policy. So you think just the more attention, the better? More attention, the better. More experiments, the better. Figure out what works and send more money that direction. Rob, thank you very much. Thank you.